If you're a longtime WJXT viewer, you have watched this veteran political reporter for decades. Mike Vasilinda is a broadcasting institution in the state. Now he's retiring. News for Jack's reporter Scott Johnson traveled to Tallahassee and sat down with Mike to discuss his nearly 50 year career. A career that has meant he has spent more time in the state capitol building than likely anyone in history. If you search the history of Florida politics. So how many governors is it again? All right, so, so let's count. Through governor. Uh, ask you, Graham. After governor. Mixon, Martinez, Childs, McKay. After governor. Bush, Charlie Crist, Rick Scott, Ron DeSantis. No one comes close to having the encyclopedic knowledge of our state capital as Mike Vasilinda. Like no one's got anything on you. <laughs> Not anywhere close. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's really taken, been just the last four or five years that I've really said, yeah, I've got a feel for this stuff. Because you see, Vasilinda started sitting through every state government meeting imaginable in the mid-1970s. Here in the House chamber, the kids are very orderly and they take their business very seriously. Sometimes that's quite a contrast to the way the real legislature conducts its business. There are very few people who, who have done what you've done in here. True. That's absolutely true. And term limits certainly changed it for the legislature. He began an unprecedented career, which includes 10,000 TV stories, 50,000 plus interviews, and get this, 3,700 to 4,000 days in Florida legislative sessions. Literally speaking, 10 years of his life, starting with one of his first interviews with then Governor Ruben Askew. And I asked Governor Askew a very probing question one time out of the clear blue. Uh, and um, he yelled at me the first time I ever talked to a governor. He yelled at you. He yelled at me, he banged his fist on the table and said, who are you, who do you represent? I was a college kid and I slunk down in my chair. Yeah. <laughs> the young Vasilinda's question helped prompt a legislative special session. At that time, we were at the height of the oil crisis. Uh, and Kind of like now. Kind of quite, it was much worse back then. Cities were turning off streetlights Kids were standing in the dark waiting for their school buses, and some of them were getting hurt. But let's back up and explain who Mike Vasilinda is. Mike Vasilinda, Newswatch 10 in Tallahassee. He was never a local reporter in Jacksonville, despite reporting on WJXT 40 years ago, or Miami, or West Palm. They go, I remember when you were in Miami. I remember when you were in Jacksonville. I used to watch you in Panama City. But you never lived in any of those I cities. I never lived in any of them. They all think I did, but I've always lived here. He never left and decided to take out a loan and buy an old film camera. This is a World War II era camera. This was the, the, the makeshift of World War II. The spring broke on it. Today, after accumulating 10,000 film reels and videotapes later, Mike Vasilinda runs the Capitol News Service, operating out of his office in downtown Tallahassee. Reporting from the state capitol, Mike Vasilinda, News Channel 7. Which sells daily stories. Mike Vasilinda, NBC2. On Florida politics. ABC7. To TV stations around Florida. Reporting from the state capitol, Mike Vasilinda, Channel 4. The local station? Yeah, is that it? I, That's I, it. I, I know it's good. Right, you got all of them except ours. Right now, when Vasilinda sends his video news stories from the Capitol to TV stations like News for Jacks, he sends them through the internet, kind of like you would. Back in the 1990s, he used fiber optic lines to send his stories around the state through the early HDTV era. Prior to that, in the 1980s, he was using satellite feeds. But get this, prior to 1982, they'd send all the video they shot by bus, putting out on a Greyhound each morning to make it on the news in Jacksonville that night. But among his thousands of stories, let's talk about some of the big stories. Not all of the headlines were political. First, tell me about Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was an exceptionally charming individual. Vasilinda first covered News Ted Bundy Ted locally in when he broke into the Chi Omega sorority at Florida State University. It was Super Bowl Sunday, 1978. Murdering two sorority sisters and brutally beating others. On campus, the murders are still the main topic of conversation. In suing days and weeks and months, uh, Bundy was in court regularly. Uh, and every time he was in court, we were there. Vasilinda faced off with a serial killer several times. What was it like being in the room with him? Scary. And his eyes were dark. It was the first time I'd ever seen the evil that was in his eyes. You could see it. You could see it. You could feel it. You could see it. 
He was not the charming guy we'd met on the street who was telling us he was innocent and it was all wrong and he needed a good lawyer to get off. This guy was evil and you could see it in his eyes. Beyond that, Vaselinda's memorable stories are too numerous to count. From the controversy over whether doctors should take Terry Schiavo off life support to perhaps the biggest Florida political drama of all the 2000 presidential election, and the battle over the hanging chads. And we worked from about 5 in the morning to well after midnight every night for the 36, 37 days that took place. That had to have been exhausting. It was exhausting but exhilarating. Thank you. But now after nearly five decades of turning these hallowed halls into a second home... Will you miss this process? The veteran broadcasting legend... Yeah, of course I'm going to miss it. You know, I mean, it's... it's it's really exhilarating. I've, I've really had the opportunity to come to this building and do what I really think is meaningful work. Is shutting his business and leaving that work behind for a new generation. He said you never felt it was work. Obviously it is, but, yeah. but in the end it's good work. I think I'm making a difference. I think I'm helping people. And I'm really, in the end, I'm telling people what their government is doing to them and for them. He leaves behind a half century of knowledge that will likely never see replaced. Good job, Mike Vasilinda. He, you know, he tells us he tried to find someone to take over his business, but it didn't work out. He says TV stations all over the state are scrambling to find news services, which are starting to set up teams of people to try to replace the loss of his political journalism that Florida will feel. We want you to know that we're, we are too. Oh, absolutely. News for Jax is working to fill the void. Of course, we continue to have our in-house political reporter, Kent Justice, who is no stranger to Tallahassee, and our political analyst, Brick Mullaney, who's well-connected with state government. And we also have the host of our Hand on Government segment on This Week in Jacksonville, Chris Hand. As always, we rely on them. I just want to say something about Mike while I have this opportunity. I have worked with him and brought you countless Vassalunda reports since 1975. If you look up the word impartial in the dictionary, you will find his picture. Day in and day out, year in and year out, regardless of which party is in power, Mike has always treated them the same. He's fair and even-handed, and that's why this TV station has used his services for these past decades. Congratulations, Mike, and thank you for every story you've done for us. And that voice, so recognizable. <laughs> we certainly will miss you, Mike.